You know, even now, after a string of pretty successful releases, news of another video game to movie adaptation fills me with the kind of low-level dread normally reserved for attractive young women left alone in the company of male feminists. But if you told me that a movie based off a racing simulator of all things would turn out to be one of the best true-life sports dramas I've seen since Ford vs Ferrari, I'd have quite rightly laughed in your face. And yet, that's exactly what Gran Turismo somehow is. I mean, it's not exactly motorsports answer to Rocky or anything, the first 30 minutes feel like an extended advert for all things Sony and Nissan, and I don't imagine it's going to be clearing up at the next Academy Awards, but what it does deliver is a simple, honest and surprisingly heartwarming story about an underdog thrown unprepared into a whole new world and battling his way through adversity and setbacks to reach the top, helped along the way by a cranky but well-meaning mentor who gradually warms to him. It's a classic story, told by a director who knows exactly how to wrap action and spectacle around compelling human drama, and it's made all the more interesting because it's actually based on real events. The movie is told through the eyes of Jan Mardenborough, a teenager from England who spends most of his days obsessively playing Gran Turismo, much to the disapproval of his father who believes he's wasting his life away. But that all changes one day when Jan and a handful of other players get a mysterious message from the good folks at Nissan, revealing that the top Gran Turismo players from around the world have been selected to train as real life race car drivers. Whoever clinches the top place wins a spot on the Nissan racing team from the upcoming season. An idea that's so goofy and dangerously impractical that it could only possibly have sprung from the minds of real life advertising executives. Anyway, before you know it, Jan and his fellow gamers have been whisked off to GT Academy where they get put through their paces by Jack Salter, a retired driver who's been given the task of turning a bunch of skinny teenage video game addicts into top level racers. He doesn't think it's a very good idea and makes it his business to prove that the whole scheme is a complete waste of time. Needless to say, not everyone makes the cut, but to Salter's surprise, Jan manages to hang in there and eventually captures the top spot, earning himself a contract for the season ahead. Pretty soon, he's in his first race, which turns out to be a real baptism by fire. His fellow racers and even his own pit crew treat him as kind of a joke and do their best to force him right out of the sport. And when a near-fatal crash threatens to prove them all right, will Jan have what it takes to fight his way back, or will he give up and walk away for goods? Now, I'd be lying if I said there was anything particularly subversive or unexpected in Gran Turismo. In many ways, it's content to drive a well-worn and reliable path with all the stock elements you'd expect from a sports drama like this. The plucky underdog given a million to one shot, the grouchy and aggressive mentor who seems unforgiven but ultimately pushes him to reach his true potential, the early success that shows what he can accomplish, the disastrous setback that damages his confidence and forces him to dig deep for a triumphant comeback at the end. It's all here and it all works perfectly well, partly because there's a kind of earnest sincerity to everything that it does that seems almost like a charming throwback to a different era at this point. There's no smug, ironic, self-deprecating jokes trying to undercut every moment of serious drama, no attempt to poke fun at how silly the concept is. The movie wants you to buy into its premise and the people involved in it, so that the dramatic moments actually hit home with real impact. The second reason is the direction. Neil Blomkamp has been a favourite of mine ever since District 9 burst onto our screens more than a decade ago, but I think ever since then he's struggled to find his niche. Gran Turismo proves that he's absolutely still got it as an action director, the racing scenes are excellent and he makes liberal use of video game overlays to help the audience keep track of who's in what position. There's lots of little cutaways to engines and machine parts working away, and I'll be honest here, it's always nice to see a bit of gear porn in movies like this. Blomkamp knows exactly who his audience is and he's happy to give them exactly what they want. The other key element is the almost father-son relationship between Jan and Jack at the core of the movie, which develops slowly over the course of the film and never feels rushed or contrived. And props to David Harbour on this one, the guy absolutely steals the show, delivering the kind of commanding, world-weary performance you'd expect from a guy who's been there and done that long before our protagonist. Oh my goodness, a movie that portrays an aging man as a source of valuable wisdom, motivation and hard-won life advice? What's ever next? If I had to level a few criticisms at this movie, I'd say that Jan's relationship with his girlfriend Audrey could have been fleshed out a bit more. The film doesn't give her a whole lot of involvement in key events, or really do anything particularly interesting with her character, and overall I think they either should have beefed up her role to make her more of an emotional counterpoint for Jan to bounce off, or just taken her out of the script altogether. And yeah, as I hinted at before, the product placement gets a bit over the top at times. We get it Sony, you're really pleased with this game, you don't have to hammer it home every two minutes. 
The movie also clocks in at well over two hours, which feels a bit protracted for what it actually delivers. I mean, I was never bored or anything, but I was definitely ready for that final race to roll around. Overall though, I have to say that I really enjoyed Gran Turismo. It's a movie that falls neatly into the category of simple, unpretentious, uncomplicated entertainment that I've come to appreciate more and more in recent years. Not trying to blaze any particular new trails, but happy to walk down well-established ones with confidence and purpose. Coming out at the tail end of the summer movie, movie season, I've got no idea whether it's going to find much success at the box office, but honestly, if you need a break from Barbenheimer mania, then you could definitely do a lot worse than this little gem. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now.